Hi guys, so I want to show you this heated exchange that took place between Priti Patel, the Home Secretary, and two Labour MPs in the House of Commons a few days ago. Now, I, I'm no fan of Priti Patel. I think she's a horrible, disgusting individual, a true Tory. But the problem here is the Labour MPs. I think they need to reframe their questioning because these types of questions don't have the impact that they hope they have or they expect them to have because it allows the, the minister or the Secretary of State just to get off the hook. Let me show you what I mean by this. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Um, we'll try again. Will the Home Secretary agree with me that the government should remove statues of British figures involved in the slave trade? Further, will she agree with me that the lives of black people who have died following contact with police, like Sarah Reid and Rashan Charles, are worth more than any statue? <laughs> So what she's doing here is she's combining two issues. One, the issue of statues, which is more a local issue. It's not something really on a national level. But she's also introducing the idea of and a very important issue, of course, the, the fact that many uh, people are dying in police custody or w when, they mate, when they get into contact with the police. Madam Deputy Speaker, the Honourable Lady will be well aware and perhaps she would like to lobby local authorities across the country to bring about the changes to statues. And I notice the Honourable Lady celebrated the violence and criminal scenes that we saw across the weekend. I thought the politics of protest and placards have left the Labour Party with the departure of the right honourable member for Islington North. I hate that expression she has. So, um, of course, taking a swipe at Jeremy Corbyn, you know. <laughs> He's not, he's not there, but take a swipe at Jeremy Corbyn because, well, we all hate Jeremy Corbyn in the Tory party. So whenever we have the opportunity to swipe at him, we do. And of course, she probably knows that that Labour MP is supportive of Jeremy Corbyn. Now, do you see how she ignored the second question? She avoided the second question. She started talking about statues instead. So that was a wasted opportunity. Shelbrook. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. In regard to public order, can I ask my right honourable friend to continue the policies of stop and search and get knives off the street, which not just black lives matter, but all lives matter? <laughs> so that's not even dog whistle, but a foghorn. My honourable friend is absolutely right. Madam Deputy Speaker, one of the most extraordinary... Basically, what, he's, what he did there was he was baiting. He doesn't care about... Uh, Black Lives Matter. He doesn't care about All Lives Matter. He doesn't care about anyone, probably, but his own party. But he he used he knew that the other side would be baited by it. They would be upset by that type of language. Um, so he used it just to just to piss off the Labour Party. It's it is disgusting behaviour because this should be a moment to ask the the minister an important question to put them under pressure. But it was just an attempt to bait the Labour Party. Home Secretary. One of the important facts about stop and surge, which I've experienced myself when it comes to meeting the parents. <laughs> she was about to say something else, the victims? Of young black men who have been murdered on the streets of London is the significance of stop and search when it comes to taking weaponry off our streets. And I think it is important for all members of this House to recognise, and when I've seen those parents and when I've sat with them and heard of their stories, they themselves call for more stop and search, to stop more young black lives being killed and to prevent more criminal and violent activities on the streets of our cities. But I, the problem here is that why are you not looking at the cause of this? You're looking at the symptom. The symptom is there are many people dying, being uh, attacked with these knives. What is the cause of this? You're trying to fix the problem. You're trying to fix the symptom, but not actually the core problem. But what you're seeing now is, in a moment, is the uh, the the Labour MP who actually asked the question. She leaves the th uh, leaves the chamber because she's just. I think what happened was she was baited by this racist MP in the Labour Party, in the Conservative Party, and she had enough. Thank 
you, Madam Deputy Speaker. My inbox, like many's, is full of emails from constituents demanding we decry racism and police brutality, and I absolutely applaud that. One such constituent, Zora, second generation British Indian chartered accountant and mum of three children, asks me, according to inquest, the proportion of BAME deaths in custody where restraint is a feature is twice as many as other deaths in custody. To build trust with communities, what can the Secretary of State tell us government is doing to end this injustice? <laughs> Madam Deputy Speaker, I think it is important to understand the facts and figures around deaths in police custody. In 2018-19, there were 16 deaths in custody, of whom 15 individuals were from a white background and one was black. It is important that obviously the IOPC looks at all investigations in the right way and holds to account police forces when deaths in police custodies take place, and that is exactly what happens. So basically saying that there isn't a problem, there isn't a racial problem. Priti Patel's purpose is to appear more, uh, how can I say, acceptable to the public look we have the labor the sorry the conservative party have evolved it's no longer crusty old men we also have <laughs> uh, extreme hard right women as well and you know we used to have hard right white women but let's evolve let's pretend that we actually care about ethnic minorities by putting an ethnic minority in a senior position um Preeti patel is is a puppet of the of the party she will never be more she she will never be more than that she may eventually become prime minister someday but she will not she will always be a tool of the party the party don't care about ethnic minorities they don't care about poor people they don't care about uh, women they see them as tools in the same way as uh, Savid Javed or uh, Rishi Sunak, the the party see these people as this is a this is something we can use, we can convince the public that we care about them. It's not actually caring about the public. It's about it's about convincing the public that they care about them. It's all about the narrative. It's all about perception, and they have been doing a, a good job at it. They actually have convinced the public, in many ways, that oh look. Look at our cabinet. It's um, it's quite diverse. That means it's looking after the poor. It represents society. No, it represents the richest in society. That's what it's always about. The Conservative Party have never, do not, and will never care about the working class or the poor. And anyone who thinks that they do or will is gravely mistaken. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.